you can see alcohol. It must have taken some kind of mad genius to put all that into operation. If you check your weather reports, you'll notice there's a tidal wave begun in the North Sea, which is making for the mouth of the Thames. Yes, it's the same old tidal wave that wiped out Krakatoa all those years ago. just disappeared off the map. Oh, Mr. Green and the kid have escaped. What? What are we going to do? Will they go to the police? Oh, let us think. I'm sure he'll come here first. Why? Because Mr. Green's precious niece is here, that's why. And you know what that means. What does it mean? It, it means, means we've, we've got, got a hostage. hostage. Be careful about kidnapping any more kids, though, sis. I've got a lot of money invested in this. What with a space satellite, the electronic equipment and everything. I can't be seen to be a party to any more kidnapping. I could lose everything. Oh, kidnapper. Quiet, Kevin. What we have to do is find someone else we can fool into kidnapping the girl for us. Then they'll take the blame if anything goes wrong. What about your two thugs? That's another thing. When they found out Jack Green and the kid had scarpered, they got cold feet. They should have worn thicker socks. Oh, go to your room, Kevin. Off you go, son. They left the country. After all I've done for them, there's no loyalty anymore. OK, they sent a card from the Costa del Sol. Then we must find someone else we can trick into kidnapping Kate. Come off it, sis. Only a complete idiot would do that. And I know the very person. So let's get this straight, huh? You're telling me that Kate Stevens has this uh, bad illness? I'm afraid so. It's in its early stages and she has to go into quarantine. Oh, see? See what? What? You said you saw something. He means I see. I see what? That's what I asked. No, I say see. Not see, saw. Oh, see, saw. Oh, can we get back to this illness? <laughs> The thing is, we've discovered it's very, very catching. Except for people who come from San Perdino in South America who are immune. I come from San Perdino! No! no. Yes! <laughs> Listen, I'm a lucky guy, huh? You certainly are! Then you are the <laughs> ideal person for this job. Yeah. What job? Now, take Kate to this address. It's a private clinic that specialises in treating this kind of illness. And no one will be there right now, so lock her up in one of the rooms. Well, I don't know. Now, you sure this disease doesn't affect guys from San Perdino? Not at all. Uh, there is just one more thing, Mr Cuervo. See. Si. Kate doesn't know she's got this illness yet. Oh, and you want me to be the one to tell her, yes? We think you are the best person for this kind of job. Caring, sympathetic, understanding. <laughs> Oops. You got it. She may get upset and not want to go with you. No, but it is important for her health and the health of everyone here that you take her away. Even if she resists. You may have to tie her up and gag her if she won't go. Oh, Without a tire up and gag her. <laughs> I think that might be rather extreme, James. Here. If she won't go, it may be necessary to use this. But it is for her own good. Okay. Okay. What's this uh, disease called? Herbaceous. Mumps. Herbaceous mumps. Very rare. Leave it to me. I'm going to be very careful when I tell her. Oh, yes. <laughs> I said he was the very person. <laughs> Kate Stevens? Yes? You got herbaceous mumps. <laughs> Terrible. You got to come with me and get put into quarantine. Go away. OK. That's scary enough. Get your hands up. Go away. Oh,
girl. Kate's in trouble. What sort of trouble? I just saw her in class too with Mr. Cuervo. What's trouble about that? He had a gun. What? Ah, uh, Mr. Cuervo. I wonder if I could have a word. No, I can't stop now. I'm on an urgent um, errand for the school. I'm very oh, sorry. No, this won't take a moment. Go uh, oh, ah, 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 ah. Hasta la vista, this gun it fires silent bullets. Caramba! So, Don't you usually knock before you enter a room, Mr. Green? Oh, usually, yes, but not when it might give a suspect time to escape. A suspect? What do you mean? I mean, there's something criminal going on here. Simon and I have just escaped from the cellar where you and your brother were holding us captive. But Simon has been ill. <laughs> really, Mr. Green? <laughs> What's that awful smell? No, oh, is it that bad? Simon and I escaped from your brother's cellar by way of a convenient drain. On our way here, we telephoned the police. They'll be here at any moment. The police? I don't think that was very wise of you, Mr. Green. No? No. Because if I was the sort of person who would kidnap you and Simon, I might also do the same thing to your niece. What do you mean? What have you done to Kate? Now, if you were to tell the police there'd been a mistake... Where is Kate? I'm here, Uncle Dad. No, don't do it. She's got hellacious pumps. This man is deranged. Oh, no, you don't. Oh. Sorry about the delay, but I couldn't find my whistle. Morning, Miss Bones. I'm Mr. Green, Sergeant. Ah, yes, the gentleman who telephoned us. It would appear, Miss Bones, that this gentleman has made some serious charges against you. Oh, more than just would appear, Sergeant. I think when you've talked hello, to this boy... Hello, hello. What's all this, then? Meeting of the Board of Directors? Sir James. Hello, Eric. How's the family? Very well, thank you, Sir James. We very much appreciated that hamper you sent us last week. Uh -oh. oh, and Sergeant Stringer is very much enjoying your holiday home in Torremolinos. Great. If I can do anything to help the law, you can count on me. How's the super? Much the same, sir. Still very concerned about the rising crime rate, especially litter. Terrible stuff, litter. Terrible. Terrible. Sergeant, arrest this man. Arrest? Do you know who you're talking about, sir? I most certainly do. He kidnapped me and this boy here and kept us locked up in his cellar. Poor old Jack. <laughs> he does this from time to time, I'm afraid, Sergeant. What? He goes bonkers and starts accusing people of all sorts of crimes against him. Last month... He thought everyone was putting salt in his custard. Custard? What on earth are you talking about? Well, what about me? I was kidnapped by you. Oh, you must excuse them, Sergeant. He's obviously got the children in on this as well. <laughs> How about me? I was nearly kidnapped just then. By the caretaker. With a gun. No, 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 no. no. Look, they told me she had the uh, malicious clumps. Malicious clumps? <laughs> See what I mean, Sergeant? I do indeed, Sir James, and I'd like to say how sorry I am that you've been subjected to this. Sorry? These people are criminals! I shall have to place you under arrest for making false charges, wasting police time... You're arresting Uncle Jack! Uh, that won't be necessary, Sergeant. But the man needs help, not imprisonment. Let's be lenient with him, eh? If you say so, Sir James. But if you ask me, you're too kind for your own good. If it was me, I'd lock him up and throw away the key. Yes, well, he's already tried that. Anyway, sis, I've come to take you out for that short break, as promised. Short break? Yes. Remember? <laughs> we talked about it. A little break, hey, sir? And well deserved, if I may say so. Going anywhere nice? Not far. Just far enough so we won't be troubled anymore. Come on, sis. Uh, what do you want done about this man here, Sir James? Oh... I should just let him go, Sergeant. I'm sure he's learned his lesson. Cheerio. There goes one of the finest men in England. Count yourself lucky and don't do this sort of thing again. We're getting a bit annoyed with your bothering the local police. So, so, so. so much for the law. You even had the proof with you and Simon. Yes. But we can't go around handing out hampers and free holidays to the local police. They told me she had the sebaceous hops. <laughs> Somebody's trying to make an idiot out of me. Yeah, well, I bet I didn't have to try too hard. Congrats! What's the next move, Uncle Jack? <sighs> I'm going to telephone Em and the others at the weather station. With what you've told me, Simon, Professor Birdwood ought to be able to make some progress with her investigations into the freak weather. Em was here at 
school. Em, here? Yes, <laughs> dressed up as a cowboy. A cow? Oh, Em and his disguises. One day they're going to get him into serious trouble. I still fail to see why we had to do a runner with you, Termit. We had the police on our side. Yes, but only the local police, sis. If Jack Green calls in Scotland Yard, I wouldn't be able to pull off the local squire act so easily. Number one's calling us. I think you ought to take that, sis. I don't think she'll be very pleased with our news. Got to tell her sooner or later. Earth Station receiving. Is there any problem down there? Everything's just fine. You're lying. Look, you better tell me what's happened, or I could become rather angry. Well, there has been one little teeny weeny minute hitch. Oh, no, no, not a, a hitch, really, more of a, a minuscule teensy weensy mini hiccup. Look, what exactly has gone wrong? Well, the uh, the boy and Mr. Green appear to have um, escaped. Escaped. Escaped! Yes. Oh, you fools, you numbskulls, you nincompoops, you hopeless nitwits. Now, look here. Remember who put the money up for all this. You dare to compare money with my genius. So Mr. Green has escaped, has he? My superior intellect tells me that he'll be going to that pathetic little weather station. Actually... Oh, be quiet. You've been useless at dealing with Mr. Green so far. You better leave him to me. Number one, over and out. Oh, Mr. Green. Now you've made me cross. Really cross. She's going to do something to that weather station. What are we going to do? Nothing. We want it out of the what it all means. You look as if you've been at this sort of thing for ages. Well, really. Now, look here, Miss Fortune. As a matter of fact, we have worked out what's going on. <laughs> Tell them, Professor Birdwood. Yes. What Simon told us about the satellite orbiting the moon gave us the last piece in the puzzle. The satellite is a switch that operates a huge magnet here at the school. A <laughs> magnet? <laughs> My idea. Oh. Yes. I don't need to the magnet is the standing stone in the school grounds. Now, if we can get inside it... If only we hadn't lost that computer program, Kate. What computer program? I had this program that was working out the combination to the security lock to get us into the stone. 
But the computer crashed and the programme got ruined. Is there any chance of resurrecting the programme? Well, there was an explosion, but we could try. In the meantime, I suggest we mount a 24-hour guard on the standing stone in case the boneses turn up. Oh, that's a good idea. Oh, Mr Green, 24 hours is an awfully long time. It's almost a whole day. It is a whole day. Oh! Oh, so it is. <laughs> well, why don't we all go and have a go at that computer? Where is it? I'm not very good at computers, but I'll have a fact. Jack, we don't know what that stone is capable of. It could be dangerous, you know. Oh, uh, Mr. Green. Yes, Miss Fortune. I was just thinking, now that everything seems to be under control, I wondered, have you given any thought at all as to what happens to the school play now that poor Mr. Watson is indisposed? Indisposed? Why, yes. After an incident with Mr. Cuervo and a toy gun, his doctors ordered him to go home for three days to recover. Oh, well, that's most unfortunate. We but... do have a responsibility to our audience. Tomorrow night, they will all be here, expecting to see a performance of Frankie and Lizzie. And the part of Sir Francis Drake is made for you. I really don't it think... It would be awful if all that hard work the children had put in was to go to waste. Oh, very well, I'll do it. Oh, wonderful. Would you like to rehearse? I have a script right here. Uh, isn't there another part that you can rehearse with anyone else? Well, yes, there is the part where I confront the King of Spain. Oh, who's playing the King of Spain? Mr. Cuervo. Well, excellent. I'm sure he'll be delighted to rehearse with you. I'll see you later. <gasps> He's going to do it. Now that Frankie Drake is here, Merry England need not... Hello. Hello. Is that the hotline of the Minister of Meteorology? It's my birthday today. <laughs> well, many happy returns. Uh, could I speak to your daddy? No. He's expecting my call. He, he's gone out to buy something. To buy something? Hmm. Could it be a submarine? It won't be much use to him, because when the tidal wave hits, the pressure will break the hull open and pulverize him. Countdown starting now. Tell your daddy that, Mr. Junior Minister. I hate this waiting. It's being stuck here underground. I've got to go out and get some air. All right, we'll use the back entrance. I will not. One has to creep through bushes and things. I have a pride in my clothes, you know. This is a designer label coat. You're taking a big risk going out the front way. Nonsense. Believe me, they'll think we're miles away. But sis... Oh, don't sis me! I remember when you were my snotty-nosed brother who used to embarrass me at parties. You were an idiot then and you're an idiot now. No one will be watching and I am going to get a breath of air. James! James! Come here! Come Content made glorious summer by the sun of York and all the darling you did good to pick me for the king of Spain. Mwah, I have everything. The looks, the brains, the voice. The modesty. Brilliant and modesty. Yes, right. Well, I'd like to rehearse our scene again. Mm, and which scene is that, lovey? Which... Oh, the one I threaten you and say, unless you give me the throne of England and marry me, I cut off your head. Yes, that's the one. Marvellous. Yes, right. You may threaten me, King Philip, but you will never frighten Elizabeth of England. With a hey, nonny, nonny, no, sweet cousin of England. Verily and in truth, dost thou knowest who thou art talking to? Hmm? Thou art talking to, thou art talking, what's his name? Philip. Phil the lip of Spain. And unless you give me the throne of England, eh, right now, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut off. You are no gentleman to speak to a lady thus. You think that's bad. 
This guy, he ain't started yet. No, no. Who, I'm Fish? Angry. You beast. So you he's on the other side after all. And now he's yes, threatening Miss Miss Misfortune. Now I start by tying you up, okay? No, no, you won't. <laughs> Miss Greco. Yeah, he was attacking you. No, he wasn't. We were rehearsing for the school play. Oh, gosh. Uh, to Dorothy. Number one to Earth Station. I'm waiting for confirmation that the weather station is destroyed and Jack Green with it. Uh, well, uh, we're sort of stuck. Sort of stuck? Uh, well, sort of surrounded by kids. By kids? At the school, under the stone. Trapped. Why are you trapped? Because the children are revolting. Well, all children are revolting. No, no, the children have revolted and trapped us under the stone. But why? Well, we didn't ask them to. Well, somebody else must have. But who? I think I can answer that. Oh, you're so feeble. Despite all your efforts, Jack Green is still at large. <laughs> it's always the same, isn't it? You want anything done properly, you've got to see to it yourself. Well, since you pair of idiots can't deal with one man and a few children, I'm coming down to Earth. But, but, but if you do that, You'll be bringing the satellite down, and once that happens, we won't be able to stop the tidal wave... Tidal wave! ...from destroying London. I know. I'm so ruthless, aren't I? Anyway, what's a city between enemies? As for you two, you better stay where you are and guide me in when I come into land. Begin setting the coordinates. You're going to destroy London! Westminster Abbey, the Houses of Parliament, St Paul's Cathedral, Harrods! These places have been here for hundreds of years! Well, it's six o'clock tomorrow morning. They'll still be here, just underwater. Harvey Nichols! Shut up, you fool. You have to tell him everything. What's the matter? He's not going to tell anyone. And when number one gets down here, she's not going to leave witnesses like him around. Coordinates 34.3 and 56.9. 34.3 and 56.9. Speed 50,000. Reverse thrusters. And now to sort out Jack Green. It came from over there. A loud bang. Sort of sonic explosion. It was almost as if something had landed. Any sign of activity at the street? No, nothing. Maybe there'll be something on the news. There's a telly in Miss Bones' office. Oh, Quick, oh, oh. switch it on. A man-made satellite was discovered today in the area of Brimley Crompton. There are no signs of any occupants, and police are investigating the possibility that it may be a hoax. The area has been closed off. Oh, thank you, Bob. Uh, we have just received this news flash. An urgent warning for everyone living in London. Reports are coming in of a huge tidal wave in the North Sea, which is heading towards the Thames estuary at enormous speed. It is estimated that it will reach the Thames estuary at 5 a.m. tomorrow morning and that London, London will be completely destroyed at 6 a.m. All inhabitants of London are ordered to evacuate the city immediately. We repeat, evacuate the city immediately. 